Well, hello, friends. Hi, everybody. So we're here today. We are in Ontario. Uh, we've been home all summer and through the fall. And we are getting ready to head back out abroad again for our winter. And let me tell you, we are so excited to travel abroad again. Mind you, six months in Ontario and Canada was fantastic. However, we're really ready to get on a plane <laughs> and head to Europe. So in preparing for that, we realized that we've actually learned a lot in this last year of travel. Uh, we did do about six months uh, away last winter, and now we've spent another six months here at home in the van. And with these lovely beasts, <laughs> we are spending a lot of time with family and friends. And as the time wraps up here, um, we thought, what a great opportunity to actually share with you guys kind of what we've learned. Uh, we still feel very new. We are certainly not experts, but we do have that whole year of full-time travel under our belt. And we have learned a lot. We really have learned a lot from everything from packing to like you name it booking airbnbs this and that and flights and buses and trains and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff we've learned a lot and it's been so fun however we feel that we're a little more well seasoned, seasoned. travelers now <laughs> yeah so we're definitely going to make some changes and there's some things that we learned that we did really well that we're going to keep doing or maybe tweak just a little and today like we said we are preparing we are coming up probably in the next week we're going to be leaving to go yep. abroad we'll share what those plans are with you at the end of this video um but Today, we just wanna take you along. We're gonna be running some errands. We're gonna be getting ready for that travel. And we're gonna talk about all these things we've learned and what we've realized. And we wanted to share it with you in case this is maybe in your plans or you want to have that extended time abroad. Um, we'll throw a little bit of van, but a lot of this is gonna be about traveling abroad because yes, sure. that's what we're about to embark on. And we have that hindsight, so. We hope you're gonna have fun today. All right, let's go. We've got a lot to do. Well, we did learn this year that we planned and executed half a year abroad and the other six months of the year we did in our van Sadie. And we think we really nailed it. I really believe we nailed it. However, Jan, we did learn a lot about living abroad and living in a van for six months. We did, but now after doing a full year, we did six months abroad and we were super excited to get back to the van. Yeah. And after six months in the van, how are we feeling? Well, we're feeling that it's time to um, be international again, which is <laughs> happening in a couple of days, which is awesome because I guess if we just backtrack a little bit, in April when we were in Thailand, we were like super stoked and super excited to get back to our van, get back to Canada, um, see family and friends and all that kind of stuff. And we've had an outstanding summer. We've seen family and friends. We've done amazing travels um, around Ontario and Newfoundland and the East Coast. But now we're ready to head back um, abroad. Yes, we really enjoyed our mix. It really is for us. After spending now the last six months in the van, we are ready. We're ready to have more space. We're ready to have a full kitchen. We're ready to not be cooking outside unless we really, really want to. So yeah, I think that is something we did really well. Um, we balanced it. We've been able to spend a lot more time with friends and family this summer than we did in the summers when we were working. And we were able to spend sort of longer times with family and with friends so that has been awesome so that's something to consider if you are thinking about retiring and maybe traveling full-time uh, slow traveling just think about what you'd like that balance to be so we're really happy with our six months and six months um, currently and that may change in the future and we're okay with that too we're willing to be super fluent for sure so that we really nailed. We learned that we actually really like this balance and we know it might change in the future, but we know that after six months of traveling, we are ready to be home. And after being home for six months and being in this van and the temperatures in Canada now getting colder, we are ready to go back abroad. Absolutely. So, 
we're off doing our errands for the day, so we're gonna bring you along as we do that and tell you more of the things that we have learned in this first year of travel. Okay, so another thing that we learned in the last year of full-time travel, and especially with regards to our traveling abroad, is we need to stick to one area of the world. Yeah, we started our travels last year. We went to Europe for the first three months, uh, which, you know, long haul flights coming from Canada. And then we decided to go to Southeast Asia, which we, I guess we didn't assume that would be a long haul flight from Europe, but uh, guess what? It is. Yeah, we actually assumed, I guess we have that vision of like, it's so cheap to fly in Europe, but that's within Europe. Right. If you leave Europe, so I guess in our mind, we just thought flights from Europe are cheap um, but when we decided we were flying to Vietnam it was just as expensive as flying from Canada to Vietnam so yeah just budget wise we've decided it's gonna we're gonna save a lot of money if we choose one area yeah we probably doubled our expected budget on our um, long-haul yeah. flights last year um, but that's all part of learning and that's why this year we're sort of rejigging and uh, we're not going to do that again yeah so you'll be seeing where we're going and we're gonna definitely stick more within the same area and not be venturing to sort of different continents <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, we gotta keep going because we've got errands to run. We just did a little pit stop here in Smith's Falls on our way, and uh, we're gonna take you along with us. All right, let's go. Are you getting us some heat? It's our last propane fill of the season. So we that's, sure hope so. Well. fuel fill up of the year. Pretty excited. Okay, so you guys may be wondering about safety. We get asked this a lot from our friends, our family, after we've been traveling, and they wanna know how safe we felt in those other countries. It's a very common question. And what we have learned is that we feel very safe in all of the places we've traveled. Yeah, not once have we felt unsafe. And at the end of the day, you can be in whatever city you live in. You can be in, you know, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver. And there are times where you have to be careful. And it's, it works the same abroad. And yeah, not once have we felt unsafe at all. Now, of course, that's like anywhere else um, it's going to be dependent on location. I mean, we wouldn't go to bad parts of the big cities in Canada um, or in the United States, and that would, you know, apply abroad as well. It would be in busy centers, um, airports, or other busy packed places, of course. You know, you want to keep anything, your personal items, in front of you um, and safe, but just like you would in any city or busy place here in Canada. So for anyone who's concerned about their safety when they're traveling abroad, if you are going to sort of your typical places where a lot of tourists are going, they are for the most part just as safe as any of the cities that might be in your home country. And in some places I think maybe even more safe. Um, what we find is really, it's life like anywhere else. There's families, and people just trying to live their life. They're going to work, the kids are going to school, and you know, they're wanting the same safety for their family and their children. So really, we have been very safe. We felt very safe in the biggest cities we were in, like Kuala Lumpur, had like over 8 million people. Felt incredibly safe there. Well, well, Jan, we did feel a little unsafe in Vietnam and Thailand, only when we were trying to cross the road. That was the <laughs> only time that we felt unsafe. Yes, which sort of leads us into one of our other topics, which is what we've learned about culture shock. What we learned about culture shock is, even when we expected to be shocked, we actually weren't that shocked at all. No, not at all, not at all. So let's talk about maybe like Southeast Asia because that's probably more of a culture shock to most people than Europe and probably where we expected to experience culture shock. 
Yeah, I, I guess for us, like language is probably the biggest one, but we've never really ran into issues with language. We use Google Translate a lot, which is fantastic. You can take pictures or scan menus and it translates it for you and all that kind of stuff. But really, with a smile, pointing, you can get by yeah. basically anywhere. Yes, and that is definitely something we learned. Even if we don't have Google Translate, we always like to try to learn how to say hello and please and thank you, at least some basics um, in the country that we are in and the language that they speak. But outside of that, I mean, we can't learn every language for every month that we travel, but what we learned is it's fine. So there's always ways to get by, and especially if you're just patient and smiling, don't ever let a potential language barrier hold you back from traveling somewhere that you really want to go because what we've learned is the language barrier is not much of a barrier at all. No, and if you're in like airports or bus stations, train stations, there is always somebody that speaks English. Most of the signs are, half. you know, are, are half whichever um, language and half English kind of thing. So we really never had any issues at all. And also, I think the more you travel, the less and less you're shocked by anything, culture, language, or otherwise. So the other thing that we have learned after a year of travel is it's not always easy to keep up our routines, like a morning walk. Yeah, I, th I think our morning walk we found much easier when we were abroad, but um, the last six months living in the van has been a little tougher to get out every day we found. Yeah, I think with the travel abroad, with traveling slower and being in the same place for a month, it was much easier for us to establish a routine. Um, being in the van, we are going to have to work on that much. Yeah more diligently next year. And it was really easy when we were working and before we were retired because you have to get up every day, you need to, you need to have a routine exactly. and able to fit everything in. But it's really important actually to have a routine once you're not working, maybe even more so. I think definitely more so because you're not working and you need to fill your day with purpose. Trying to have intention in our days has been really important and we do, but we have realized that when we're in the van anyway, we need to just put more focus on doing our routines on the daily, including walking, just eating at the right time. Yep. And uh, actually, I guess maybe it's just part of it's been harder because visiting with family and True. doing things and you just, I don't know, it's harder. It's just, we've learned it's harder than we thought. So what we have learned is we actually have to buckle down a little harder yep. and uh, work on those routines because it doesn't come as naturally as we thought it might. <laughs> so I guess our recommendation for anyone and for ourselves moving forward is we're actually just going to be very intentional in what we want our days to look like and actually get back into those routines with youtube it's easier um you know we like to have the afternoons to work we like to make our mornings about having coffee and a morning meeting and a morning walk and maybe an actual workout in there and then our afternoons we like to have for working editing filming yep. And, you know, dinner, sort of like when we were back in the working world, it's a little bit more relaxing and a little bit more loose. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we just wanted to share that with you because we thought it would be pretty easy because we have all the time in the world and we have all day and we don't have to put work for eight hours in the middle for somebody yeah. else. So what we've learned is when you have the more time you have, it's actually harder to establish a and routine. And the quicker it goes by. <laughs> yeah. Like the days just fly by. <laughs> so just be aware of that and know that because that's what we learned and we wanted to share that with you. Okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about is this very important item. And this is something that you definitely don't want to do. 
This has been our accommodations. Hi, Hello. Mitch. So this has been our accommodation all summer. Amazing accommodations. It really is. We really, really love the van. It's been <laughs> awesome. The van is paid for, but we do count our accommodations as staying at parks. Yep. Um, anything we have to pay for to park this van on that property. But what we really want to talk about today is when you're looking for accommodations, if you're traveling full time and you're traveling abroad. What do we definitely not want to do that we have learned? Well, we've learned not to skimp out on accommodations. And not that we really skimped out many times, but we realized the importance of having a comfortable sofa to sit down on and watch YouTube or Netflix and stuff like that. Um, we've just learned what we actually want in our accommodations because you can travel and you could save a lot of money by staying in very cheap accommodations, by staying in a hostel. That's not really where we are at, you know, in this point of our life and all of that. So we want a home and we want you know comfortable couch like I mentioned we want a functional kitchen with an oven a stove top a full-size fridge you know just certain things that we really enjoy uh, one big thing is outdoor space we always look for accommodations with a nice uh, balcony patio um, that's just important to us yeah, so it's really important to just look at what is important to you. Um, we also like a decent workspace and that can just be a nice kitchen table. Yeah. Um, we not only want to look at what is in that accommodation, but that is key. Um, and funny things that you start to realize that are actually very important, especially for us when we're staying a place a month. This is not a few days or a week where you know, maybe it doesn't bother me that there's no shelf in the shower to put your soaps. But after a month of picking all of your things up off of the floor, having all your shampoo, your soaps, <laughs> yep. everything sitting on the floor, it can just, you just look and go, we can do better. Yep. Um, we did have an accommodation where the shower head was not, there was not a place to hang that on the wall. And I need both hands to get through this hair. I can't just have one hand busy holding my shower head. Yeah, so for a month I had to hold the shower <laughs> head for Janet. Um, however- Okay, maybe once or twice I did ask him <laughs> to do that when I was getting tired of it. But um, also just your neighborhood. We, so we once, we one month decided to go a little cheaper on our accommodations mm -hmm. and save some money. And that was in Spain. Um, anyone who hasn't seen our Spain video and if you're interested, we'll put the link to that right here, but we ended up leaving yep. because we didn't like it. And this place had amazing reviews, mm -hmm. um, but there was just something that wasn't for yeah, us wasn't and for us. trying to live, we couldn't, no. we just couldn't stay there a month. So do not <laughs> skimp on your accommodations. We also thought going out, oh, hi B, <laughs> that who cares i mean we're here to travel yeah. we're here to see the world yep. we can just we just need a bed and a place to stay and that's not the that's case it's not the case at all because the case is it's your home yeah it's your home for a month and you want to feel like it's a home and we're not on vacation we are actually living our life so the reality is we are not out sightseeing every yep. day we just we need a place to cook and have groceries that we can prepare our own meals, right. um, partially to stay on budget and a lot to be healthy. And we, I enjoy cooking yep. and Mitch enjoys eating my home cooking. <laughs> I enjoy doing dishes. <laughs> he does. So a nice sink is very important. It to is. Me. Yes. Mitch needs a nice sink. And so just know what you really like. If you really like to watch your movies or a couch to lay down on, make yep. sure your Airbnb has that. Um, Another thing that we learned very quickly is if you're looking at the pictures and there's not a lot of things on the wall um, or things in the room, you know, some plants, um, some decor, some softer furniture, yep. maybe a, even a rug. rug. We really love to have a rug rather than just a hard, cold floor. It's nice to have a rug under mm -hmm. the carpet. But all that also absorbs sound. So if you get a really barren place, mm -hmm. it's very echoey and it just... It doesn't feel like home. Yeah. So do not skimp on your accommodations because that is really the place where you're going to feel at home. Yep. And don't be afraid to pay an extra couple hundred dollars. You will not regret it. For sure. 
Next, we want to talk to you about packing because you definitely don't want to overpack when you are traveling. We didn't make that mistake necessarily because we started off with carry on only, which we're super happy we did carry on only. However, even though we were carry on only, we did pack too much. Yeah, we're definitely gonna tweak it a bit, but we are super happy that we did start with carry on only. If we had had checked bags, I probably would have just thrown away a suitcase halfway <laughs> through our travels. Think about what you need to bring, and then you can probably divide that in half because you don't <laughs> need a lot of stuff. And the other thing is, wherever you are in the world, you can buy things. Yeah. So if you think you just want to carry something in case or because you might need it on the one-off chance and unless it is a super specialty item that is do or die importance, yep. we would recommend against that. Honestly, you can find so many things everywhere in the world, like deodorant, knives. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else you're going to bring, but trust us, carry on is the way to go. We may do a packing video one day, but there's lots of ways to get around your liquids. I mean, look at this hair. I thought I would die if I couldn't have my big products coming with me. I have found so many products that work really well and none of them are liquid. We've switched to bars. Yep. So that's one key. The other thing that I think we've gotten better on and done a lot more planning around this year is sort of our capsule wardrobe. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's sort of a term that's being thrown around on the internet, but essentially what we've done this year, we've really looked at all the pieces we have and gone, okay, we need, you know, three pairs of pants, four pairs of shorts, whatever the items are that we've decided based on our lifestyle that we need. And we have made every bottom match with every top we're bringing that matches with every sweater we're laying, layering over top, which matches you know, our shoes match every outfit. So we've gone with basics and we've tried to keep a color scheme and I think we've done pretty well. For sure, and we've actually upgraded a lot of things and because you only have a certain number of shirts and pants and all that kind of stuff and you're constantly washing them, mm. they wear very quickly. So we've upgraded to better quality clothing that we're hoping uh, will make a big difference. We're really happy. I think we're carrying less this time around when we head out. And I think the things we've brought, we're gonna use more. For sure. There was definitely some pieces of clothing that got brought last year that did not get worn enough for me. There were other things we carried along like a Frisbee. That <laughs> was possibly one of the silliest things, to, honestly, to carry abroad. Cause we pictured ourselves playing Frisbee on the beach. We're not bringing the Frisbee this year. So we highly recommend carry on and just do not, whatever you do, over pack. I think that's all we have to say about packing. <laughs> so let's wrap this up. Okay guys, we just wanna wrap this up by saying, you know, don't take life too seriously. You're gonna do your best to plan and just give yourself a lot of grace. I mean, this was our first year out. We learned a lot, um, but one of the best in general takeaways was just roll with the punches, be flexible, really pack a great sense of humor because things are gonna happen, things you don't expect, but you're gonna be okay. And here's the thing. Expect the best, like really expect that everything's yeah. going to work out as you planned, but know that probably it won't happen 100% of the time and that's okay. Be prepared. Um, again, in Dania, we didn't expect some things, but we just went a little over budget yep. and you buy yourself out of a bad situation. So make sure you have an emergency fund Yeah. Um, and whatever amount you think you need. Um, you know, we have an emergency fund and we usually keep about three months of, you know, living expenses in there just in case something happens you never know what might come up yeah. but you know whether it's uh, transportation trying to get there or something happens with your airbnb or something happens with a flight um, you can always get new flights there's always hotels and other yeah. accommodations and there's always another way to get there so you may be out a little bit but you just 
if you just keep that light attitude and know that things may happen, it's going to be okay. I mean, in general, people are super helpful as well. You will see the kindness of people out there in the world. So just get out there and travel and have a good energy. We truly believe that energy you put out in the world will come back to you. And we had a pretty lucky and fantastic first year. And this is our last video from oh Canada. Oh my gosh. Yes, we promised you that we were going to tell you what our plans are and we almost forgot. Oh, I know. Okay, so where are we headed first? Well, our first stop is Montenegro. However, we do have a 23 hour layover where? London, England. Yes, yeah, so we oh. might even be doing a video from London. So that will be our next video. Maybe we'll have high tea. Oh, we are having high tea. Oh, yeah. We are going to do a whirlwind layover, perfect itinerary in England, which we are busy working on right now. And then we're going to land in Montenegro for our very first month abroad, where it should still be 20 and sunny, and yep. we'll have that beautiful sea. We have a gorgeous place we're staying in. We can't wait to bring you videos from there. Um, and after that, we're heading to Albania. Yep. And uh, we have another beautiful place in uh, Albania that we can't wait to show you. And I think I want to keep Christmas a surprise. Okay, let's We're going to be somewhere maybe a little different for us for Christmas. So we hope you'll keep following along. For sure. If you like this video and found it helpful, thumbs give us up. a thumbs up. That helps us support our channel. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't and you want to follow us along. We are back out across the pond as they say exploring uh the area of europe mm -hmm. definitely sticking around europe this winter so we hope you'll follow along thanks for watching see you next week cheers, cheers.